Who wants to see the state of my room? Me neither. It is absolutely chaos right now. I leave tomorrow for like five, six months and I'm not really completely ready. But what I do have is a plan. Also, hi, welcome back. Welcome. If you're new here, my name's Natasha. I make videos about fashion and my life. And right now, I'm gonna be moving halfway across the world. Let's go. So I thought I would do a little like prepping with me, packing with me, and I also went ahead and asked you guys to ask me some questions on Instagram about my whole travel that I'm about to do. So I think we should not do too long of an intro or whatever and get right on into it. And I'm thinking the first thing we can do is answer a first question. Where are you going? I am gonna be going to Hong Kong, China. I'll be there for about five, six months. And this is because together with my uni, I was able to apply for an exchange period, an exchange semester. I could apply to five different universities. My first choice wasn't actually Hong Kong, it was Australia, Melbourne. Then I put Hong Kong, then I put the UK, and then I had Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and Denmark, Copenhagen. But in the end, I got Hong Kong, and I'm actually so happy about that. I think I, I prefer that to Australia. Like, Australia is super cool. It's even further away from Hong Kong, but because I, ha I do fashion studies, Hong Kong is definitely way better for that compared to Australia. Like, Australia isn't as known in the fashion industry. Well, it's Hong Kong, we all know that everything is. Most stuff is made in China, so I'm definitely very excited about this. I thought that we could do a little like packing list of what you need to pack when you're going on an exchange or just on like a longer vacation, a longer stay somewhere else. Like this, for example, I'm going for five, six months and this is the current state of my room. Uh, I have an extra bed there because I just had a sleepover. But yeah, clothes are everywhere, everything is chaos. But like, it's an organized chaos. Like I know what is going where and whatever. But first thing we need to think about is obviously weather. The most things I need to bring is clothes. I don't need to bring like much else. So obviously we need to check the weather, the climate that it's gonna be. So for my case, it's a lot warmer than here in Luxembourg or in Sweden. Right now here in Luxembourg it's 10, around 10 degrees Celsius and in Hong Kong I saw that it's like about 20 so it's quite warm there. So I definitely need to pack more like spring clothes, summer clothes, definitely no winter clothes. Like I'm not bringing my big black puffer jacket. I'm not gonna be needing that there. I need, like I already packed, I think I packed like five jumpers and my parents are like, well my dad, he was like, you just need to bring like two jumpers. I'm like, do you know me? Like that is so not gonna happen. My suitcase is in another room and I haven't actually physically put anything in it, but I did want to show you something that is very practical to have. If Not even if you're just going on a longer vacation, like any vacation when you need to bring a suitcase, I recommend that you buy some of these. Here is a smaller version of it. This is where I put like my underwear and socks and stuff or like belts and accessories, but then they have bigger ones. This one which is where I have my other clothes in. They are so good to have. They keep you very, very organized and plus they give you more space in your suitcase because once you pack all of your clothes and everything in those, you put them in your suitcase and then in between them, you can like stack even more stuff. So definitely recommend that if you're going on a longer vacation. You can buy them on Amazon, I'm pretty sure, or probably, I mean, I'm guessing places that sell suitcases would have them too. Let's answer another question so i had another question that was for how long you're gonna live there so like i said five six months i'm leaving tomorrow the third of january i'll be arriving on the fourth though and then i'm coming back sometime in may so that's that but how do you feel very mixed emotions i feel first of all like i'm not very ready like i don't think i'm really realizing that tomorrow i'm leaving but i'm super super excited and I have moved from home before, like when I moved to Sweden, that was the first time that I moved from home. So that's nothing that I'm like nervous about or anything, but it's gonna be so different from anything else I've experienced. Like I've been in Asia before, I've been to, I was in Vietnam three years ago and I was there for like three weeks and did a whole huge travel there. But 
the culture in Asia compared to Europe is so 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 different so I definitely think I'm gonna have some like culture shocks or some stuff like that but overall I would say I'm very excited for this and just yeah just happy in general like I love traveling this is something I want to I want to travel like my whole life so the fact that I had this opportunity from my uni to do it I'm so grateful for that yeah I think that answers the question I'm gonna be bringing two suitcases with me and one is just like a normal a very you know big suitcase where I'm gonna have most of my stuff but then I also have this smaller one which is looking like this at the moment literally everything is a mess here it's looking like this at the moment this is the bag i'm gonna have like on me on the flight plus a backpack too i'm really gonna i'm really gonna be bringing a lot of bags which you know hopefully when i get to my place i'm gonna have space because that's also like a whole nother story the reason why my room is a mess also is because when i packed to go from sweden here to luxembourg I already kind of packed, literally everything I packed was basically for Hong Kong but now I decided to repack everything because my suitcase ended up being 34 kilos on that flight I was only allowed 23 kilos so obviously I had to pay extra for that I think I brought way too much stuff so today I kind of went ahead and repacked some stuff and just threw out like, I don't know, I just went through it again and was like okay but do I really need this? And that is something I recommend for, for example, when I went through my toiletries again I'm bringing this, this huge, it's like a travel pouch for my toiletries and then I have another pouch this is what it looks like, this is for my makeup but in this one and where I have my makeup I have decided to put yet another pouch inside so that and that's kind of gonna be a smaller suitcase that I have and then plus a little pouch like that I recommend doing packing kind of like that because you're gonna be moving for let's say six months and if you decide to travel within those six months to a place you know just for a week for a weekend whatever it's always good to have like a smaller bag with you some smaller pouches so that you don't need to bring like your huge luggage with you for just like a weekend or a week's travels you know what i also recommend is for example for toiletries a lot of stuff like shampoo and conditioner and toothpaste and deodorant like all those things that you know you can buy wherever you're traveling to i recommend that you don't bring them because that's just gonna it's gonna take up space and just add on more weight to your luggage so obviously if you can buy it there it's just easier to do that rather than because either way like shampoo and stuff you're either way at some point gonna need to buy it and all of that stuff so just buy it right when you get there instead of bringing those bottles with you so that you get more space and your luggage can be lighter and then you can bring other stuff instead like I'm bringing this for Christmas I had asked for like a sunset lamp so I'm gonna be bringing this so that I can like decorate my room a little bit if I had packed all my toiletries and stuff maybe you know just, just like small stuff like decoration stuff wouldn't fit in my luggage now talking about decoration and stuff another question i got was how you know accommodation how am i going to be living and because this is a uni exchange i actually had the opportunity to be able to live on campus so i'm getting a student accommodation it's called a double room it's going to be very different from what i've lived in before because when i was in sweden i had my own apartment like i had my own kitchen my own bathroom my own just everything you know my own whilst now i'm going to be living in it's called a double room so basically it's kind of similar to us dorms where you have one room and each side is like one person's side so my side there's gonna be a wardrobe a bed a desk and a chair basically and then other side exactly the same thing and i'll be living together with another girl normally i should be living together with a girl that's also coming to hong kong from the same university as me she's in my class but then we have the bathroom which you know you have like i think it's two sinks shower toilet but then that bathroom connects to another room which is like ours another double room which means we're gonna be four people to share one bathroom which I really don't know how that's gonna go because if you have, you know, only one shower and one toilet between all of us like, it's gonna be very... we're gonna have to plan everything very well so that, you know, we have time because I feel like a lot of people like to take their showers kind of at the same time each day so it's definitely gonna be a whole new experience also the building that I'm living in apparently there's like 3,000 students living in there which also is like, whoa! that is a lot of people living in one building but it's super cool like with that 
because I live there, I also have access to, there's a gym there, there's like gaming rooms, there's study rooms and lounge rooms and stuff like that. And that's actually very cool. And I think there's a pool too. Talking about pool, uh, I probably need to pack some bathing suits. I didn't even think about that. Because also there's a beach there. Bathing suit is always good to have. And then maybe a bikini or something. Guys, the last time I talked to the camera was at like two, three maybe in the afternoon. It is now midnight. To say the least, procrastination, procrastin I never know how to say that word. Anyways, it gets the best out of me. And here I am, midnight. I have done a little bit more, but not much more. But like, I'm basically ready to go. Let me answer a question whilst we're at it because I have no idea what I was doing. So someone asked about the COVID situation in China right now. And because I'm going to Hong Kong, it's not exactly the same thing as China. Like, yes, now it's part of China, but they don't really have the same rules as mainland China. It's been a bit chaotic because first, when I was when I was literally applying to the university, there was like, you had to quarantine for 21 days, then it went down to seven days, then it went down to three days. Now it's gone down to no days. And just last week, it still said that like, when I go, I have to do self-test before I go. And then when I get at the airport, they'll do a PCR test on me. And then like, like next day I have to do my own test and then the day after that I have to go and book a PCR test like there were still a lot of COVID measures but now it's changed completely like I'm going to the airport and I have to do a test before boarding my flight or like a few hours before boarding my flight but then when I'm at Hong Kong I can test myself for five days on my own but it's not it's not mandatory but like it's recommended so I'm probably gonna do it but so it's completely calm down at least this is for hong kong at least now mainland china i'm pretty sure it's still very restricted but yeah i'm so happy about that like i packed basically all my stuff in these in my little bags like this but now i'm gonna actually put it in my suitcase because then i'm gonna need to weigh my suitcase to make sure that it's not overweight this time i'm allowed to bring 30 kilos so i should be fine plus i'm bringing a smaller suitcase and a backpack so i should be good but yeah, let's pack a little bit. So in here, as you can see, I already put some beddings and stuff. And then I have some books because I have like exams and stuff from my uni in Sweden that I have to do whilst I'm in Hong Kong because these schedules kind of like clash a bit. So I still have to bring like school books and stuff from Sweden, which is a bit annoying because like it's quite a lot of books and they weigh quite a lot, but I don't really have a choice. So I already put some of that in there and like bedding and stuff, like I said, but now I'm gonna go ahead and put my clothes in. So I feel a little bit more ready because I'm literally leaving in less than 24 hours. just bought this bag but it was complete like it was overweight i was allowed to have like 23 kilos and my bag was 34 kilos and the zip ended up like opening on one side so my dad just bought me these this like luggage strap thing to hold the bag together and i have two of them so for my like little luggage too and i definitely recommend this because you know you're at the airport and people they be throwing around your stuff like they do not care so i definitely recommend that and if you have like a lock on your bag too when you're especially when you're going very far away like a lock is always good to have on your bag because you you never know what's really going on i mean now i've basically packed all my stuff i all i just need my toiletries but i'll be packing that tomorrow because i mean obviously still need to use them tonight and tomorrow morning here are my other pair of shoes and i've already prepared my little airport fit honestly the bag is looking very good like it's normally my bags are like overflowing like this literally and it's not even looking like that right now i only need to add my toiletries like that's literally the last thing that i need to add nothing more i'm pretty sure so for now it's definitely looking good i'm very happy about that let's go ahead and answer another question what is the nightlife like in hong kong okay so obviously since i've never been there before i can't really tell from experience or anything 
But what I've seen so far, first of all, drinking age is 18 and to buy alcohol is also 18. So um, it's legal for me at least. I've seen some people like international students that went to Hong Kong like a few years ago. They had written like, oh, a lot of international students, they go to this and that bar. And yeah, I've heard a lot of, like bars. I don't know about clubs exactly, but... It seems like at least inter the international students go out. I mean, I'm pretty sure people from Hong Kong do too. But once again, I haven't actually been there yet, so I can't really say much about that. But I'll definitely be able to tell you guys about that after my travels. Also, should I do like a little Q&A video after my travels too to like update you guys about how it was and stuff or a similar video to that? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. If we talk about hand luggage, like my hand suitcase, not my backpack, but my suitcase, since you're bringing it with you on the flight and like you have it with you all the time, obviously there's no big risk of you losing it. So definitely I recommend that in that bag, you kind of want to store more valuable stuff. So if you have a camera, for example, or extra cash, your jewelry, if you're bringing designer bags, luxury bags, or just, you know, more expensive stuff. You obviously kind of want to store it in your hand luggage that's going to be with you all the time so you know that it doesn't get lost or stolen or whatever. Also, if you don't want to risk going overweight with your normal luggage, store more stuff in your hand luggage because they usually don't check the weight of that. They only check it's the right size and it's obviously you need to be able to carry that bag. When you're in the airplane, you need to put it up in the cabin thing so obviously make sure that you can do that and then for your backpack where so you want to bring your passport and important documents make sure to print out a lot of your documents because you can never rely 100 percent on your phone or that there's going to be internet or you know that everything's going to be working properly so print out everything from flight tickets to visa if you need that to covid check or covid passport all of that stuff print it all out so that you have it physically with you on paper so if you, you need to show any type of proof like it's there with you 100 sure and then obviously bring stuff for you like entertainment stuff like a book or download stuff on netflix before your flight download i don't know games if you want to do that just make sure like you can be occupied on the plane because it's not always sure that you you'll be able to sleep if you have a long flight where you know that you'll be traveling overnight I do think a neck pillow is very good to have. I actually don't have one anymore. I used to have them, but I don't have one right now. So I don't really know how that's going to go because I'll probably just end up having a sore neck afterwards. But I think like I can live with it this time. But if you have one, definitely bring it because it's so much more helpful than you think it is. Headphones, obviously, if you want to listen to music or want to watch a movie, you know, you want to respect other people. Remember to not bring any liquids. And if you do, that you have those zipper ba ziplock bags with you so that security doesn't, you know, throw them away. Well, it can always be nice if you have a very long flight to have some liquids, liquids with you. So if you want to do like skincare routine, refresh yourself a little bit, double check like how much you're allowed to bring normally i think it's as much stuff as you want as long as it fits in that ziploc bag and each bottle is under 100 milliliters because even if the bottle is bigger than 100 milliliters but you only have this much left they're not going to accept it you know double check what you're allowed to bring in your hand luggage and sometimes you're, there's certain stuff that you're not allowed to pack in your bigger luggage like battery packs uh if you have a hard disk or something like that you need to have that in your hand luggage because they don't allow you to do to have that in your main luggage or the one that's gonna be checked in the smaller suitcase that you're gonna bring with you i would say also bring some like necessity stuff with you just in case your baggages get lost or are not get lost because hopefully they're not gonna get lost obviously but if they're delayed and come a few days later so you have a few things to work with like maybe a pajama a change of clothes you know just a few things like that and then like toothbrush and stuff doesn't really matter because you can always buy one at an airport or something like that they usually have necessity stuff i think i'm gonna have a last question and kind of like round this up because i don't want to make this a super long video either but also i'm gonna make sure to have a necessities list for if you're traveling for an extra long time then i'll be putting up a necessities list here and you can just screenshot it and hopefully it will help you out what are you looking forward to the most honestly it's a hard question because like i said before i haven't really been to asia that much i've been there literally once and okay i've been to dubai too but i don't know it doesn't really count as asia for me so i'm honestly mostly excited about just seeing their culture 
because I know that it's gonna be so different from what I'm used to and and the fact that I'm not just traveling for like a week or a few weeks but I'm actually living there is also I feel like that's gonna be a whole different experience from if I were to just go there you know on a vacation so yeah I'm kind of just excited to see like what daily life is gonna be for me honestly I'm very very excited about the food because Asian food is my number one food like I'm always down for Asian food it's always been my favorite food from what I've seen like I've kind of done a little bit of research like I've looked a little bit especially like I do my research on TikTok guys okay I'm, I'm gonna warn you there but I always search on TikTok like Hong Kong food or Hong Kong this and that and guys the food looks so good and I'm so excited to try a 7-Eleven in Asia because their like ready-made food is another level like oh, I want to try those like like this is just random stuff like the noodles that you can warm up there and like the I think they call it rice rolls that are like these triangle rolls that are wrapped in wrapped in seaweed and you know sushi rice and then inside there's like either tuna or salmon or something like that it's basically like a sushi but just wrapped in like a little triangle like that i have been wanting to try those for the longest time ever so yeah i think the food is going to be very 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 exciting part but then obviously to visit the place too and see both the city and then hong kong island too because the city is very like a lot of buildings and food markets and streets of art and museums and I want to do all of that but then on Hong Kong Island you can do like hikes and when you climb to the top you can see like the whole of Hong Kong and then there's this like I've seen that there's there's this like Buddha statue that's huge and I want to see that and I want to try the like little train it's not called a train actually I don't a tram thing I don't know I don't even really know what they're called but I am so excited to just see everything and try everything and eat everything i'm excited for everything basically like that's that's the only way i can put it hopefully i'm going to be vlogging quite a lot of this i really want to document it not just not even just to share it on social media but also to like keep it for me as memories so that in a few years i can look back and be like oh that's what it was like when i was there like that's what i was feeling and that's how it looked like but with that said i think this kind of like rounds up this video i know i didn't do like a lot of packing i guess for this video but it was more just preparing a bit with me answering some questions just sharing my thoughts on on what i feel like it's gonna be like before i actually get there but then maybe it might be completely different when i'm actually there we'll see about that though thank you so much for watching this video if you watch till the end you are a real one comment where your dream travel place would be like where do you want to travel to the most in the world that you've never been to or maybe that you have been to and that you really want to go back to. I hope you have a great rest of your day or good night if you're going to sleep or good morning. But yeah, I will see you in my next video when I'm in Hong Kong.